Hello there folks and welcome back to the Chaps Guide. My name is Ash and I'm your host on this journey through men's style, self-development and of course personal grooming. Now a very short while ago I made a video in which I talked about how it's important to make a little bit more of an investment in certain foundation items of your wardrobe, your style, which will pay you back in the long term. You know, a little little bit more money invested in certain things like an overcoat, your shoes, leather items is really going to come back to you over time. But conversely to that, there's also an argument for there are of course items in your wardrobe in which you can save money by not spending a large amount of money when you buy them. And that's what I'm going to talk about today. Items which you can comfortably go cheap on. Because, you know, I know that there are many of us chaps out there who do not have a large budget for style. We are operating to a tight fiscal policy when it comes to the purchasing of items, of clothing, accessories and so on. And there are areas in which you can cut your budget. Now the first area I'd like to talk about is the good old shirt. Okay, shirts are such an important part of any gentleman's ensemble of clothing. It is the blank canvas to your clothing in many occasions. You know, it's where your accessories like a tie, a pocket square, a cravat or a scarf like I'm wearing today, which will really be accented by the quality of your shirt. But you don't have to spend a pile of money on your shirt. You can absolutely get away with buying something modestly priced. Now, of course, there are many bespoke shirt manufacturers there, Turnbull and Asser, Geeves and Hawks, to name but a few, who will relieve you of hundreds of pounds for a simple shirt. But over time, I've discovered that yes, I have a few Turnbull and Asser shirts and they are absolutely fantastic, but the shirts I wear very often are actually very cheap. The shirt I'm wearing today, I purchased in Costco for under 15 British pounds. And often you'll see me wearing white shirts or light blue shirts on this channel. Again, I've often bought these in Costco because I find that those shirts from Costco fit me quite well and I quite like the colour. They wear very well. Some of them I've owned for over five years. I wear regularly, they get washed regularly and they look good even after many, many years of wear. So for me, I know that I can get away with spending quite a low amount of money and get a fairly good you know, representation of a shirt for that sort of price. So it's well worth shopping around. Don't automatically think the more money you spend, the better product that you're going to get back when it comes to a shirt. You know, look at what the shirt is made of, good quality cotton, and very importantly, look at the fit. The way that the shirt fits you is king. Never forget that. Find a brand which looks good on you, which fits you quite nicely. And if you can do that and it doesn't cost the earth, you can save a bit of money. But do not automatically go and throw money at a shirt manufacturer just thinking that the more you spend, the better product you will receive. It's not always the case. Now the next area I'd like to suggest in which you can save some money are the things that you wear below the waist your trousers. Because for many years, I've been buying my chinos at The Gap, you know, a fairly well-acknowledged budget clothing store uh, and always got some sort of deal or sale on. I like to wear different colored chinos. I've got a pretty ordinary colored pair on today of khaki chinos, but The Gap sell their chinos in various different colors and very modestly priced. I normally buy them around the 20 pound mark. However, you know, if you go into those some higher end gentlemen's fashion outlets, you will find chinos which are not much better, made of not much better material for three or four times that amount of money. So I'm easily saving that by taking my custom to The Gap or many other stores like that. Find a pair of trousers, chinos that fits you just right and you don't have to spend money to get something which looks fairly good on you. The same, I would say, applies to your jeans, your denim trousers, because jeans are one of those things which can be hugely expensive, you know, just because they've got a certain name or a brand uh, stitched onto the back of them. Think beyond 
brand identity, gentlemen. Go into those budget stores and see if you can find a pair of jeans which fits you just well for 15 to 20 pounds. Because let's be honest, they're probably being made in the same factory as those much more expensive jeans. The only difference is the label which is sewn onto the back. So before you automatically start, you know, scattering your money towards these high-end expensive jeans and chinos, think again. Think where your dollars and pounds could be better spent. Now, before I go any further, I'd like to just spend a moment talking about the efficacy of some of the things I'm talking about, because I'm suggesting that to buy cheaper items, we will be buying items, most often made on the other side of the planet. And that means two things where our ethics are challenged. Firstly, the conditions for the people, the workers who are producing those garments. And secondly, the fact they have to come from the other side of the world, which impacts upon our global environment. Now, it's up to you. You have to be able to countenance the decisions that you make if you're buying some mass-produced product being made by somebody who's probably working for a dollar a day on the other side of the planet. But that's a decision for you to make. But it's worth me mentioning that the efficacy of the products that we're buying, particularly when they're inexpensive, does play a part in our decisions. Now, the next area of our clothing ensemble, which I suggest you can save a bit of money without anybody even noticing, is on some of your accessories. First of all, your tie, all right? Now, when you see me on these videos, most often I am wearing a woven tie because I don't often wear silk ties when I'm just having a chat with you because I deem these to be sort of semi-formal situations. I wear a silk tie generally when I'm wearing a suit. When I'm in less formal situations, I wear woven ties block colours, you know, nice simple colours, but nice and woven. It presents a suggestion of informality, in my mind at least. The ties which I wear, I have, you will find me wearing in most of these videos, I've bought them from um, AliExpress or eBay, all around the five pound mark. Now I know, you know, we're talking about efficacy, they've been made on the other side of the planet, they're not made of silk, you know, they're made of some form of man-made material, most often polyester, but for me, for that amount of money, I'm happy to pay five pounds so that I can have a wide choice, all right? Because I like to have lots of different colored items. So I can choose the, what goes with the other accessories I'm wearing and the clothing that I'm wearing too. Now, if I was just gonna have one or two foundation pieces, which I intended to wear all of the time, then I would be happy paying £50 for a tie knowing that I'm going to wear it day in, day out, and I'm going to get my money back by wearing it very often. For me, that's not the case. So I buy my ties inexpensively knowing that they're not the highest quality, but I bet none of you have ever noticed. Now, another area where you can save a dollar or two or a pound is actually in your scarf and your pocket squares, because these items, uh, again, you can pay a fortune for. You know, you look at some of those high-end uh, gentlemen's couture websites, and you will find a pocket square easily, 50 pounds and above. A scarf, silk scarf, like I'm wearing today, 100 pounds. Won't be an, un an unusual price to see for these items. But, again, you know, you can buy them from eBay, you can buy them from AliExpress and other overseas retailers for a fraction of that. Over time, I've discovered, you know, a few retailers out there who I can trust my money with, who I know are going to provide some great products. Uh, today, I'm wearing a scarf and a pocket square from Soho Scarves. You know, I've been wearing their, their products for a number of years now. They're excellent. They're silk. They also have polyester ones. Um, by the way, this video is not sponsored by Soho Scarves or anything of that nature. They're just a trusted retailer that I've been going to for years and I feel confident in endorsing their wares. Uh, but you know, you will find little routes you can go to save you some money. You don't have to pay 50 pounds for a pocket square. You can pay five and have 10 pocket squares instead of 50 pounds and having only one. If you like choice, like I do, be careful with your money you can absolutely get a lovely collection which will have you covered for every eventuality that you find yourself in. Now, one area in which you can absolutely save money, and that's your underwear. I do not understand why some gentlemen will pay a fortune for branded underpants when in reality, nobody is ever going to see them. 
or maybe one or two people, but you know, let's be honest, it's not very often. For me, and I'm, I'm gonna make an admission here, folks, I buy my underwear from trusted British uh, clothing retailer, Marks and Spencers, because I've found that their underwear is comfortable and it's very modestly priced. I do not put my money in Tom Ford underpants and Calvin Klein underpants because yes, the comfort may be there, but it might cost three, four, five, ten times as much as my good old traditional underpants from Marks and Spencers. So before you start opening that wallet to buy those expensive silk designer underwear, think to yourself, why am I spending this money on something that nobody other than your mother and your physician should ever really be looking at? Now let's talk about my final area in which a cash conscious gentleman can absolutely save a fortune. And that is on your fragrance. Because, you know, let's be honest, a gentleman always wants to smell good. It's one of those things when making a first impression that will stick in the mind. The olfactory sense, the sense of smell, is something which is strongly related to memory. And if you smell good, people will remember the fact that you smell good. Believe me, if you smell bad, they're very much going to remember it. But the good news is, smelling good has never been cheaper for the fragrance-minded gentleman. Now, I often feature fragrance reviews on this channel, and they are almost always very financially modest in price, very budget-friendly, because I don't put my money into those big-named fragrances, things like Tom Ford, uh, Creed, where you will pay hundreds of pounds and hundreds of dollars for you know, 100 milliliters of fragrance. I much prefer to put my money into reasonable priced fragrances, which I'll be honest, I find just as good. You know, some of the brands or fragrance houses which have treated me well are brands like Dunhill. You know, my signature summer fragrance is Dunhill Edition. I've been wearing it for years and Edition is a fresh, zesty summer fragrance which always, you know, it, it is my signature fragrance. I would wear nothing else in the summertime. Another great fragrance house is Aramis. You know, Aramis make, of course, they make the original Aramis, but many of the flanker fragrances are also fantastic. You know, Aramis uh, Havana, Aramis Devin, uh, they're great. Aramis Adventure, another great summertime fragrance. And all in the 20 to 30 pounds bracket, they really deliver you don't have to spend a pile of money. And another um, uh, house which I do favor, and that's Antonio Pierce. That's a Spanish cosmetics and fragrance manufacturer. They make some great fragrances like Corum, one of my absolute favorite winter fragrances. It's a powerhouse. It's from the 1980s, and it's an assault on the senses, but it really works well. Now, all of those fragrances are generally available under 30 pounds, in some cases, under 20 pounds. And that is not too much money to spend on a fragrance when you consider that a comparative fragrance from, so we say, Creed, might cost you 250, a giant sum of money. So you don't have to raid the wallet. Now, I'm not saying that those cheaper fragrances are made of the same quality components. But they certainly don't have the same amount of marketing, where a lot of the money goes in these higher-end products. So even though you might not get technically such a perfect fragrance, you'll certainly get a wallet-friendly fragrance. So think about that before you start writing checks for huge amounts of money for the latest trendy fragrance, just because it's associated with a brand name. You can do just as well elsewhere for a fraction of the price. So there we go, folks. I hope that's been some use to you today. Those are some items in which you can save a bit of money. You know, things like your underwear, your jeans, your fragrance. And that money which you save, you can then put into those important investment items. Like, you know, as we talked about earlier, your a suit, for instance, a pair of shoes, things that are really gonna make a difference and are gonna last for years and years and years. So, you know, yes, you are, you know, taking money from Peter and spending it on Paul, but it's money which is well invested in your future dynamic style. I hope you've enjoyed this video today. If you have, I would be delighted if you would do me the honor of giving me a thumbs up. And if you're not a member of the Chaps Guide community, please click that red button, join us as a subscriber, and come on the journey along with me and everybody else in the community. Until the next time we meet, I would bid you farewell, take care of yourselves, and I will see you again very soon.